Hi everyone, and welcome to Token Topics. I have an exciting XRP video in store for all of you. You're not going to want to miss this. Stuart Alderati responds to some confusion whether XRP is a security or not. We're going to look into that. Also, XRP is ready to explode according to Wells Fargo. I'm going to go over some detailed information that not many are talking about, so you're not going to want to miss that. Also, Richard Hart is sued by the SEC. Some of us saw that coming. We're going to look into that and Coinbase is fighting to save the crypto industry in the United States. We're going to go over these topics and more. Remember that any investing is risky. I'm also not paid for or sponsored by Ripple. Let's dive in. All right, XRP fans. July was a memorable month for Ripple and XRP holders. People say we had a partial victory, but I believe that victory speaks volumes for the asset XRP. Now, let's stay motivated. We have a whole month ahead of us. Hopefully, it will be an unforgettable month in a good way. And understand, understand that anything could happen to the price of XRP at any moment. What's up, fam? End of July. August is usually a very hot month. Tensions are rising. People are cannibalizing their own. Stick together. Together, we are unstoppable. And remember why we're here. We're all headed to the same destination, so keep walking to the goddamn finish line. Just recently, a federal judge in New York rejected the recent Ripple ruling about XRP not being a security. Now, there seems to be a lot of confusion, and people were up in arms about this, so Stuart Alderati took to Twitter to clear the air. So Stuart responds by stating, Let me be clear about some confusion going around. The ruling in Terra case changes nothing about the Ripple ruling that XRP is not a security. Also, the Terra case is just starting, and the judge has to accept everything that the SEC alleges is true for now. Our ruling came after a full factual record developed over two plus years was presented to the court. Stewart continues, I'll let others dive into the Terra judge's comment, including his apparent misreading of the Ripple judge's reasoning. Example, missing the point that secondary market traders can't invest money in anyone or anything if they don't know who they are buying from. If anything, it's just more of a distraction, more FUD, and people are using this example, people that hate XRP, they're using it to just smear Ripple and XRP holders. That's all it is. Next topic. I'd like to go over this Wells Fargo price prediction for XRP. It might seem a bit radical, but keep in mind that those who have been studying XRP and knows what this technology was created to do, it's really not that far-fetched. Now, things can happen at any given moment. Now, and keep in mind that this is coming from somebody who's working in the banking industry, somebody from Wells Fargo, that probably might know something, but Take it with a grain of salt because we've heard radical price predictions before. But then again, it's coming from somebody from Wells Fargo. I think probably the main issue why people in the XRP community possibly think that this price prediction is crazy is because they're exhausted. They're exhausted and I feel for them. We've been holding for a very long time. But again, anything could happen at any given moment with this coin because of what it was designed to do and to load the value it's designed to flow. We could be sitting at an XRP in the sense like we're looking at right now, then all of a sudden the price skyrockets because it has to meet demand. A Wells Fargo analyst predicts XRP price will hit $100 to $500. And eye-popping price predictions are common once bullish energy returns to the cryptocurrency market and a current cycle is no exception. As one analyst from Wells Fargo predicts that XRP could skyrocket as high as $500 over the next four to seven months. Shannon Thorpe, a business support manager at Wells Fargo, shared her insights into the XRP token on Saturday, saying that while the XRP community, commonly referred to as the XRP army, is more divided than ever, she sees a positive future in the near term thanks to the recent ruling that XRP token is not a security. One side, looking at only charts, taking cues from the past and trends that follow Bitcoin to draw short-term price predictions, she said. While others cling to utility, believing that partnerships and a replacement of antiquated systems will drive price. Neither side has been correct, nor in the future will either side be correct. 
Speaking directly about XRP rolling, Thorpe said, why would we continue to pretend it is and make price predictions based on securities in the crypto space? This logic seems counterintuitive. Many analysts have given XRP a price target ranging from $1 to $10, but Thorpe suggested that the token's price would need to be significantly higher if it hopes to compete with systems like the Society for Worldwide Interbanking Financial Telecommunications SWIFT. Now, before I dive into this next part, remember that the XRP ledger never sleeps 24-7, 365, even on holidays. So SWIFT handles 44.8 million messages a day. These are just messages, not settlements, and only half of what XRP can do, she stated. Now, let's say that the dollar value for SWIFT is $7 trillion a day, not 24-7 or 365. If Ripple, through its 10 years of innovation and partnerships, were only able to grab 30% of Swiss value, that would be $2.1 trillion in daily value, approximately 13.2 messages. If you were to set a range for XRP, say $1 to $5, you're ultimately saying that if one company owned all the XRP, $100 billion, that they would have a liquidity strength from $100 billion to $500 billion, she said. This LS does not account for any growth in the economy, the action of messaging and settling, nor the 24-7, 365 benefits we receive using XRP. If I were to send $750 million transaction with an LS of, say, $1, that is roughly 10% of all the bank's XRP. Thorpe noted that, furthermore, there is one more client and no one wants to break $750 million into $1,000 transactions, each having a burn rate. So in this scenario, the bank holds all the XRP liquidity. In reality, there are numerous small investors that hold the token. A portion of the XRP supply has been uh, permanently destroyed or burned. The multiple large banks also have an allocation. If I had to guess, there's 50 to 75 billion XRP at any one time supporting LS. Thorpe said. Now spread that across 301,000 different banks, liquidity providers, and governments. One dollar times 75 billion equals 75 billion dollars. 1,000 banks equals 75 million XRP dollars for each bank and or liquidity provider. Now Thorpe highlighted several assumptions that need to be considered in determining a price for XRP, including that all big banks will have more XRP and that the small banks will use more liquidity providers. Liquidity providers will purchase from exchanges and Ripple has released all of their XRP from escrow to get 75 billion. If circulating supply is less than 75 billion, the price per XRP is exponentially higher. That's a good point right there. Now, given the LS is roughly 75 million per bank and JP Morgan being a top tier a bank moving more than $8 trillion a day, and say due to service overlaps with SWIFT, and the assumption that Ripple only captured 10% of that market, equaling $800 billion. Remember that only $75 billion XRP is out there. $1 is not enough to move that kind of money. But that should go without saying, she stated. Now, this is just cross-border transactions, not derivatives, not real estate. CBDC to include, but not limited to foreign countries, bank and projects technical parallels, and NFTs. Based on these facts, Thorpe said that her price prediction is anywhere between $1 to $500 near the short-term four to seven months. Bam. The article continues. I'm going to put the link to this. Now on to some recent crypto news. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission sues Richard Hart, the creator of Hex and Pulse Chain, on unregistered securities fraud allegations. That they are suing Richard Hart. Hart, founder of Hex, Hexicans everywhere, shocked by the allegations included in this action. Some pretty big numbers. One billion is the alleged amount of unregistered securities that were sold. And some pretty interesting details about Richard Hart's personal spending habits, including over a very large black diamond. I will toss it to Wendy for your thoughts on this action from the SEC. What do you think? Of all right, first off, I'm going to talk about this in a non-biased stance. This isn't shocking to me that the SEC is going after Richard Hart. Um, the SEC has a history of going after some of the largest names in the industry for publicity. We've seen Gary, do, Gary Gensler do this time and time again. However, just remember, 
just because the SEC or a public servant or a government entity decides to go after somebody or anyone in crypto doesn't mean that the allegations are true. We've seen um, the SEC claim that 13 assets on Coinbase were in fact securities, um, which is very interesting considering that the chair of the SEC, Gary Gensler, couldn't tell anyone under oath if Ethereum, the second largest cryptocurrency by market cap, was a security or not. So the SEC is alleging a lot of different things. And me personally, this doesn't come as a surprise. It doesn't come as a shock. Richard does have a very loud and flamboyant um, persona. And um, me personally, I'm waiting to see what happens with the evidence and what 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 facts that the court is going to be or that the SEC is going to be able to provide against Richard and the things that they're saying that he did. Um, I'm a big supporter of the crypto industry in general, anybody that the SEC goes after, because at this point, I just feel like the SEC has a very terrible track record in going after people unjustly or entities unjustly. However, that doesn't mean that I'm saying that he's innocent or what he did was right. I'm simply waiting for more evidence to come out. And then Fair enough. I think with this story, in particular, though, we've all been waiting for quite a while. And Wendy, you alluded to it, right? You're not surprised because I think a lot of people looked at this and thought, like, at some point this was going to happen. Uh, the Hexican community, Rich Large, which is just the name for this Hex community, people who bought into the Hex token, they've been purchasing these tokens in different iterations for years. It's been basically a profiteering fest for Richard Hart, who has used it to buy uh, one of the world's largest diamonds. He's well known for buying uh, the entire Gucci store out in New York whenever he visits, uh, tons of Lambos. Like This is a man who saw the potential with issuing his own token and ran with it. Back in the day, Richard Hart actually used to be a Bitcoin maximalist, someone who thought that only Bitcoin uh, was the way forward. But then he also realized that he could become fabulously wealthy if he o issued his own token and kept a gambit up for years. Part of this is funny because if you look at this and you look at his online persona, it is hilarious. Like he's a jokester. He he has loud um, him walking out of the Gucci store, just carrying all these bags. It's comical. But then you also look at the people who purchased Hex over the last four plus years and the fact that the SEC did not do anything to stop this, even though it was uh, obviously a scam from the beginning. That's the heartbreaking part. There's a lot of people who put tons of money into Hex just to lose everything. Uh, there is a documentary that's supposed to air pretty soon about this whole ordeal uh, that we look forward to seeing. And it does detail how there's a lot of people who, you know, they put their life savings into Hex and now they're looking at it as huge losses. Um, comparatively, $1 billion funneled into this token versus what happened with Luna. The hex story starts to dwarf anything that we saw last cycle. For the course for Gary Gensler's SEC. Last but not least, are you wondering what life is like at Ripple? The vice president of talent, Jim Chauncey Kelly, discusses what it's like to be part of our global team, positively impacting the world and building the internet of value. Let's take a look. Ripple's mission is really about building breakthrough crypto solutions for a world without economic borders. We're working on a real world problem to solve for moving value at the speed of information. So Ripple's business solutions are faster, more transparent, more cost effective and solving inefficiencies that have really long plagued and defined the status quo. And together with partners and, and the larger developer community, we identify use cases where crypto technology will inspire new business models. It'll create opportunity for more people. And with every solution, we're realizing a more sustainable global economy and planet leveraging carbon neutral blockchain technology. I would describe the culture at Ripple as one being transparent, collaborative, you can lean over and have a quick conversation to share your ideas with any leader in the company and get their feedback and input to really help you succeed. You get to work with leading experts and rising stars in a variety of fields from blockchain and crypto to finance, government relations, and, and more. Ripple really creates an environment for employees to learn and grow every single day, no matter what you do here. There are opportunities for creating real impact. We have a robust learning and development organization. What is exciting about working at Ripple right now is really about building applications on the blockchain and utilizing crypto, revolutionary technology, driving change across many industries. Employees can make tangible impact because they're not just a number. Our size is to our benefit when it comes to empowering employees to make tangible changes. When you apply to a role with us, 
Let us know why you're passionate about what Ripple is doing, why what you get to do working here would make a difference to you and your career. The type of people who thrive working at Ripple are at all levels in their career, from interns to new grads to senior leaders. You don't have to have blockchain technology or crypto experience, believe it or not. We want people that are passionate about what we're doing, passionate about making a change, and really folks that want to learn and grow into a career where they can have a real impact in the world. Keep your crypto safe with a decent biometric hardware wallet. With talks about cyber attacks or exchanges going down, it's imperative to keep your assets safe. And just know with Descent, your private keys are your private keys and only you have access to them. In the description below, I'm going to put affiliate links where you can receive $30 off the retail price. There's also a two wallet package deal that's a great value. There's no need to wait. Order your wallet and keep your crypto safe now. Well, everybody, that's all I have for the video. If you did enjoy the content, please do subscribe so you can stay up to date and go ahead and put your thoughts and opinions down below. Thank you.